Hey grade 10s, today we're going to be going through asymmetric drawings which you guys will be doing up until my trick. They are actually quite simple and I think that they are one of the easiest drawings to score marks in, that is just my personal opinion. But today we're just going to be going through two different examples and what we need to do. So obviously we know that when we draw an isometric we draw in third orthographic projection which means that we follow this format of having top, front, and right, and left, 45, 45 degrees. So you can see that we've, you've been given the front view, which will obviously be this view here, the top view, which will be this view here, and the right view of a bookend, okay? The position of points A on the drawing sheet has been provided as well. Okay, so it says instructions. Using a scale one-to-one, -one, Convert the orthographic views of a, the bookend into an isometric drawing. Make A the highest point of the drawing. Show all construction and no hidden detail is required. Now this is for a study guide we're really working on, but you are more than welcome to use the measurements on the paper and draw on a blank piece of paper to practice in the meantime, if you feel you need a little bit of extra help in this department. And you could also just use it to give you a guideline of what is expected of you if you're struggling and you would like additional help. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get our lines in. So we have got a 30 degree line on this side here, although let's keep that straight as possible. We've got 30 degrees and we have got 30 degrees here as well. Okay, so you can see like this over here. Then we have got the measurements given to us. So obviously we're drawing scale one to one, meaning the measurements stay the same. So we are going to measure the following measurements. So we've got 10 plus 25 plus 25. So in total, that is a measurement of 60. So if you want to make a mark at 60, you can. You can also make a mark at 10, and you can make a mark at 25 as well. That way you've got your 10, 25, and 25 as well. Okay, we are going to have the exact same thing on the other side. So I like to pre-measure out my uh, points because it makes it easier. So we're going to have 60, we're going to have 10, and then we're going to have a mark at 25. I do this because when we draw... It's going to make things so much easier and I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a second. So we are going to bring these lines forward. You can see we just bring them lightly forward all the way like this. And it just gives us a nice sort of section to work on because you can see that we are starting to formulate all our points and it just makes it easier for us to do. Okay, so you can see we've got this over here. Now, if you have a look at our drawing, you will see that we have got a thickness of 10, and you can see we've already got that thickness in. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, you guys can see it from what I can see on the camera. However, if you can't, please let me know in the comment section, and I will try and make additional plans for you guys. But I'm going to try to keep it as visible as possible for you guys. Okay, so now we've got um, our thickness of 10. But we would like to get this measurement here of 20, which will give us this section here. So see, we have 20 and 20. And so we are going to just measure that in at the moment. So we're going to grab our ruler. We're going to measure 20. And we are going to measure 20 again like this. Okay. Once we have got those there, we're going to draw a line like this. And we're going to draw a solid line like this as well. And then you can see we've got these edges here. And now we just want to make everything solid so that we can see exactly where we're working on this drawing. So we're going to draw that. And then we are going to get these little bits in here as well. Okay, so you can see we've got that bit in now. Okay. Then we obviously want to get the total height of the drawing, okay? And in order to do that, we are going to need the height. So it's actually currently missing on this drawing here. 
However, I'm just going to quickly find the measurement for you guys and we'll come back. This is still a practice page. Um, so we'll, I'll get that sorted out and then we'll continue to draw. Okay, so the total height is 55. So I'm just going to quickly sketch that in over there so that we obviously know our total height is 55. Okay, then we're going to take this line down from here at the back of the corner and we are going to measure our 55 total. So, okay. there we go. So you're going to make your point on that line. And then once you have made that point, you're going to just draw a line extending out like that and draw a line extending out like that. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to build a box to work in. Um, as you get more comfortable with isometrics, you can change the method in which you do it. But for now, we're going to start off with the basics and we're just going to build our box. So we have obviously got the top part of our box over here, um, as you can see. And then we are going to take these lines down at the lines we've just drawn over here. So you can see they are lining up. And we have now got the sides of our box. And then we're going to bring those lines forward. Like this. And you can see we've got sort of a cube shape here. You can see I've obviously messed up my line a little bit, but got a cube shape. And then you're going to have a line down like that. So you can see we've got our cube shape here. And now we can get the rest of our drawing in. So we're going to start off by grabbing the height that we've got over here, 15. And we are going to just draw a line height of 15 like this. And we're going to draw it onto our cube in the front here. So that we obviously know where our drawings are going to be happening and then you can see that we have got a slope that goes down straight to the end okay by looking at the sides here so the slopes would be these sections here and then obviously we've got the slope over here as well this is also part of a slope this is a slope so basically what that means is we're going to have to measure 10 at the bottom over here. Okay. As well as a measurement of 10 at the bottom here. And the reason we do that is so that we can connect the points together equally. So we're going to take this point and this point at the back. And we're going to connect them just like this over here. As you can see. And then we're going to do the same at the back over here with this point and this point here you can see that we've done that over there and then you can take this line at the back straight down to the middle okay so it should look like this so far then what we are going to do is we are going to grab in this measurement here which is also missing so let me quickly correct that for you and then you guys, is that missing? I don't think it's missing. No, it's not missing. Okay, it's not missing. It's 25. So you must just look around your paper for it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to measure 25 at the corner here. And then we're going to measure 25 again at the corner here. So we're going to have 25 and 25. You can see that that gives us two points here. We are then going to bring our points back like this over here. And then from there, we are going to cut those points straight off. So we are going to draw lines like this over here. Okay. And then if you want to, you can draw in your lines at the sides here. If that will make it easier for you to see what you're doing. My lines are very skewed, so just make sure yours are done very neatly and tidy. Otherwise, you can lo lose marks um, 
with just not having a very neat drawing. Let me just move stuff out of the way here. Okay. Also, just make sure your workspace is clear. That way you don't have to knock things around while you're drawing. And there you have got, so far, part of your isometric. Okay, then we have been given a measurement of 5 to know that we have got a measurement of 5 at the top here. And this is a measurement or a piece that's completely missing. So we're going to measure 5 and going to measure 5 again. Just like this over here. And then we're going to bring those lines back. So we've got that line there. And we have got this line over here. You can see like that. And then we have got a triangle in front. So that is actually the bottom here. These pieces will meet as well as this bit here where those pieces will meet as well. And then this front bit here is a cutout. So we're going to just draw all the last pieces in as neatly as possible. I have drawn this line a bit too dark, um, a bit too long, I mean, my apologies. So we will have to correct that. Because I'm not looking at the light lines. lines. So we're going to take this line backwards like this. I'm going to actually just draw it solid. And we're also going to take this line backwards like this as well. Again, mine are not lining up so nicely. So let me just neaten it up and then we'll come back. So you can see it is now complete. All right, so just a couple of things with an isometric. I know that visualization can be a struggle. And one thing I am going to say that really helps with that is really just practicing. So practicing is really, really important for any drawings, especially um, your isometric drawings, your drawings where you've got to visualize things. It helps a lot. In fact, all of your drawings really should be a lot of practice. But I know specifically in solid geometry and isometric, the visualization can be quite a challenge. So you really just got to practice. And if you need to color in certain sections so you can determine which sections and pieces belong together, that's also okay for you to do. And I hope that this gave you a little bit of an indication of what is expected of you in an isometric drawing. So I hope this helps you grade 10s.